Um, here we go. Um, I found a couple of pieces of aluminum that are going to work. And uh, I'm cutting them up and turning them into... All right, All right. it's the next morning. We've got our two, uh, two um, little uh, uh, bearing blocks. And uh, basically what I'm doing here is just squaring up all the surfaces so that they're nice and even. Okay, we got one surface squared up. Now we'll go ahead and uh, come in and flip this thing. And uh, first we got to come in and file the edge here just to get uh, get all the little, uh, you know, grumbles off of the edge there. And so that when we flip it, that the uh, that it doesn't get caught up in the... All right, we got her flipped. Now we'll kick it into automatic feed here. And uh, pretty much the mill just takes it from there till it gets to the other end. Then I'll stop it and index it up a little bit and uh, run it back and then index it up a little bit more and run it back. And then we're done with that part. All right, side two is complete. And uh, we take that up, kiss that with a file a little bit. Just to make sure we got all the grumbles off of there. And it being aluminum, it's very flexible and fileable. Now, we're going to drop it in height-wise. But in this case, we're going to have to make sure we're square. So let's bring it in a little bit closer there. And let's... Maybe a little air. Come in with a little, uh, yeah, we aren't even close. There we go. That looks not like 90 to me. Yep. Drop it back down, or bring the quill back up, and then drop the, uh, table back down and I think we can get ourselves a nice square edge going crank it up and let's see what we've got Pick it up so it starts to hit there we go Yeah, it was off a bit, I'd say. Well, you know that little power hacksaw, it's not very accurate. But, it, you know, it does the trick. You can uh, put something in there and walk away, and that's, for me, that's the key. We'll count on the bridge port to uh, square things up. Okay, one last pass. And there's our third side. Okay, one last side and we're all squared up. Let's go ahead and whip that baby out. Looks like about it. Let's get that last one here. Okay, we got four sides done, and I think we'll stop there for now. 
the rest of it we're probably going to go ahead and throw it have it in the lathe and uh, you know sur uh, polish these surfaces uh, in the lathe because it'll be easier uh, so I'm going to go over to the grinder and take off all of the little scrappy stuff here and uh, be right back okay today we're going to cut the seats for the bearings and probably cut the radius around the seat and uh, basically we've, we're going to put the bearing right in the center there drill a hole all the way through and then put the bearing right in the center now in order to do that with a square piece of material we can't put it in a three jaw chuck of course so we got to put it in a four jaw but my four jaw chuck weighs about 900 pounds so I'm going to try a little experiment here and see if I can get my little south bend four jaw into the lathe so I can snug down on it and look at that fits beautifully now in this case it's not that big a deal because it doesn't have to be centered all it has to be is in there so that I can adjust my four jaws to get this thing centered out uh, on, on the in the lathe. So uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, mess with uh, getting all of our little uh, ducks in a row here. And that's going to happen. by pulling these back a bit and uh, getting this piece of material in there so we can see what we've got and it looks like I actually want to be way out there like that hmm it might not work well no it'll work it just has to work with uh, with the jaw turned around okay Pull the jaw completely out. This old chuck is just not in the best shape these days. Of course it was built in 1948 and for many years it probably was abused because it's more of a hobby lathe than uh, in anything. And hobbyists tend to keep real good care and I certainly am uh, guilty of that some years back uh, okay there we go yeah that's gonna work just fine so once I get this set up for this one piece then then the next piece will just pop right in there and it'll be no problem. Okay, where's our line? There it is. Well, we're still not there. We need to come way out here. So that's okay. We can just turn this other one over and adjust that in. All right, we'll get it pretty close to set up before I come back and, uh, you know, take a break. Okay, we're pretty well set up here. We're not accurate by any means, but I uh, just wanted to kind of bring you in on the accuracy. So, uh, basically, we're going to have uh, our, our total width is, whoops, is 1,800 uh, almost. Uh, so that it would be 900 would be half of that so then I just come in and scratch a, a line at my 900 mark and bring it around so I can see it there it is and then I uh, bring up my uh, my center tool and you can see it's a little bit off so uh, I can just get generally centered by just uh, using a live center or you know any kind of center really we're just flipping it back and forth until we get 
center it up. That looks pretty good. Still a little bit more. Let's see if we can just crush it in. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now, uh, back and forth. Looks like we got to go a little bit in this way. And we're pretty close there, I'd say. Let me get in just a tad closer. And since in my uh, older age here, my eyes are starting to give out on me, I'm going to go ahead and bring in, put the loop on, 10 powered loop, which is, you know, pretty strong. And then kind of bring this in just a little bit better. In a sense, we're just eyeballing this because it doesn't really matter at this point. There we go. Because all of the shaping is going to be around this hole. Um, and also, once we get, uh, get it located on the platform, we will uh, adjust it sideways, well, not up and down, but sideways, and, uh, and get it so that it sits correctly, and then drill hole, a couple of holes in the bottom here and, and lock it into the platform. So for right now, I think we got what we want. Let's uh, go ahead and... Uh, Put a drill bit in there. There we go. Swing that into there. And all we're looking to do is to uh, just get ourselves a good solid center. And that is plenty. Back up our rest and take the drill bit out. Now we're going to measure our, our shaft size, which turns out to be what? 250 exactly. Uh, so, uh, and at this right point, we want to drill a hole that relieves that a little bit because the shaft wants to kind of ride uh, with a lot of room uh, so that it rides freely on the bearing. So we're going to drill just a little bit bigger than 250. While I find a drill bit, uh, you know, take a coffee break.